Good day. I know all of you folks listen to these devotionals at all kinds of different times in the day. I'm actually uh, taping whatever I do on the uh, videoing the thing on in the afternoon of a beautiful day here on on Wednesday. Um, we continue with Second uh, Peter, and I guess I continue to be amazed after all these years. Um, how sometimes texts look like they're just not going to connect to, to me or they're not going to point me or strengthen me in, in faith, but I'm constantly reminded of the beauty and the strength of Scripture uh, to speak to us anew in every day. So we continue with Second Peter. This time we're reading from the third, again from the third chapter, the 11th, 13th verses. And again, uh, you have the NRSV before you. I am actually reading from the message, um, just so you can uh, get a sense of the, of the different ways that, that these translations can, can come to us and speak to us in different ways. So Peter writes, Since everything here today might well be gone tomorrow, do you see how essential it is to live holy life? Daily expect the day of God, eager for its arrival. The galaxies will burn up and the elements bent down that day, but we'll hardly notice. We'll be looking the other way, ready for the promised new heavens and the promised new earth, all landscaped with righteousness. Really, you know, I've, I've, as I've looked at this text over the last couple of days, really, uh, much as it was in the first Peter text, see how God helps us to look at these texts or helps me to look at them through his graciousness, his love, his concern for all of creation. Not to scare us to death to, to be, change our behavior, but to, to help us to be new people in how we relate to each other and to God for God's sake and in response to God's love. How well do we know that uh, everything here today might well be gone tomorrow? The pandemic has reminded us of that. The life as we knew it and the life as it was with family, friends, and all of that stuff has been radically changed for us. Who, who, saw, who saw this coming? Who was beginning to live their life knowing that this was none of us? None of us were. But it, we've been affected by this, this and been part of this here today, gone tomorrow, since we've been aware of that for a long time. As some of you know, uh, my mother-in-law died at the age of 94 back on March 24th. It seems like a long time ago. Uh, she had lived a full life. She gave no indications uh, to us or to anybody else. And she kept talking about living to 100. Um, and I was helping with her finances. I was getting serious. I think you got enough money, Audrey, to live that long. And uh, so go for it. And then one day we get a phone call. She's had a massive stroke and she literally dies three hours later. Here today, dead tomorrow. So we've experienced this in the past. And, and what do we do in the meantime, knowing that that can kind of hang over us and life can change? Well, Peter goes on to say, daily expect the day of God. That doesn't mean daily expect to die, but daily expect the day of God eager for its arrival to anticipate that God coming in its fullness and making all things new and filling the world with righteousness and graciousness as opposed to what we see is, is important for us to be expecting God's presence, to expecting God to come to us and being eager, not for the end of time, but for the fact that God promises to come to us day after day. And the writer goes on to say, We've heard that daily expect the day of God be prepared for his arrival. It's going to come like a thief in the night. Through scriptures, we find, we're reminded over and over again, don't worry about when it's coming. Just live your life in response to God's graciousness until that day comes. And then this next line, the galaxies will burn up and the elements melt down that day, but, but you're not going to even notice because what's going on behind you doesn't, when what's going on in front of you and God before you uh, leads you and so what's behind you in the past is gone we'll hardly notice we'll be looking the other way ready 
for the promised new heavens and the promised new earth. Because we marvel in the beauty of the relationships we have in this life. We marvel at the beauty of the earth. I'm sitting here looking out my window at the trees that are blowing the flowers that are there. And just the beauty that is around us and the beauty that is to come, God promises us it will be just as beautiful. And maybe we pray that it will be much more prevalent and that we would find it easier to find joy and grace in every day. So live our lives. We're called to live our lives, anticipating that God will speak to us, and to noting those times and those things, uh, that God does speak to us. And even, like I've mentioned several times in terms of the devotion, that uh, so this has been, in a sense, I want to say good for me, but it has been in terms of my relationship with Scripture and with God. It's gotten me focused in a new and, and helpful way. The two songs for today, I think, speak to this sense of daily expecting God in two different ways. And Morning is Broken, but Cat Stevens, he has a new name, and I'm forgetting that because I remember Cat Stevens when he was Cat Stevens. Um, and, um, and morning has broken, and the, and the video and the pictures that go with it just speak to the beauty of life that is still is there and is present, and that God's holy presence within that beauty. And then the second hymn, much more traditional, and the, and the music and the words are there and presented in a much different way. O Zion, haste, uh, because written in the sense of anticipating God's presence and praying that God would get there quickly, both in God's fullness, but also in the sense of those temporary small glimpses we get into God's holy presence in life as we now live it. Be eager, despite what is going on around you, to search out God. Take a time to give thanks in your devotions and your life for how God touches you with glimpses of the kingdom, the glimpses of beauty in relationship with others and relationship with the world that is around us. And recommit ourselves to be eagerly exhibiting and sharing God's love in, through, and with our lives. Amen. Let us pray. We know, O Lord, that uh, we don't always feel blessed. We know, O oh Lord, that life as its time can get us down. We know, O oh Lord, that sometimes we get sick and tired of being with the people we love the most. But in prayer, in time, O oh Lord, help us to find space for each other. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to grow in our understanding. Help us to keep talking and to keep sharing and keep looking for you together. Help us, O oh Lord this day to trust in your presence, to be eager for the day that is to come and the day that is to be. Amen.